the Ed Cunningham Award, sponsored by the Ford Motor Company, is for the best international reporting in magazines. And the winner is Russ Reimer for National Geographic Magazine for his broad look across multiple cultures and the attempts to rescue dying languages. Russ is coming to us tonight from Cambridge, Massachusetts. And I came from uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, hoping to uh, <clears throat> do a better approximation of black tie than I have. Uh, and with an intent to talk uh, with you about a sensation familiar to many people in this room. It's the sensation of sort of surreal whiplash that we uh, have at that moment when we are leaving our safe, secure uh, homes and our uh, safe, secure, calm American neighborhoods to venture into territory where that safety and that security uh, don't exist, where people live in conflict, in chaos, uh, in violence, uh, in war, sometimes in terror. Um, I was headed out, actually, to get my rented tuxedo um, Friday morning in Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, and was told that nothing was open and that I was going nowhere. And I spent the day as uh, a quarter million people did, a surreal day with Black Hawk helicopters circling overhead and uh, armored Humvee columns coming up the street dropping off SEAL teams to secure my safe American neighborhood. So I'm, uh, um, excuse the uh, homebrew tuxedo and, um, and I'm got him, you're spared the lecture. I'm gonna work on that theory more before I bring it to the public. No recipient of this award, uh, I guess, has ever stood up here imagining wrongly that uh, this is an award uh, solely meant for him or for her alone. Uh, like other awards given tonight, this is to honor a type of reporting that cannot be done without an organization backing the writer up tactically and financially. This story was not a particularly dangerous one. I think there was only one instance where we had to uh, disarm a, uh, a drunk and confrontational person, you know, uh, y y you go for him and I'll get the rifle. Fortunately, I had a linguist by my side. Um, the story is about languages and uh, because we were looking at uh, languages that are in danger of disappearing in very remote corners of the world, uh, uh, it took me and uh, my photographer, Lynn Johnson, to the uh, Sonoran Deserts of Mexico, the Lesser Himalayas of India, and to uh, remote regions of Siberia. Um, um, in so many ways, the types of things that cannot be done without an organization like National Geographic. Nobody does a better job than National Geographic of devoting the resources to uh, story and supporting the writer. Uh, these things aren't easy, and this ain't cheap. You know, the, uh, the uh, the truth of it is that information wants to be expensive, and National Geographic has done a wonderful job of supporting, <coughs> supporting writers, and not just in doing the story, but in doing the story right. I want to thank everybody at Table 31 for that, and for those back in Washington. I especially want to thank Barbara Paulson, who was my editor on this story, who took it from uh, first concept to final caption, but who was especially magnificent line by line, and you won't often hear a writer talk this way. Um, she made me look good. Uh, I've worked with Barbara before. Um, uh, I was thinking on the way over here tonight that it was a while ago. Barbara, this is almost a quarter of a century ago, and for a different magazine that she sent me into South Central to report on Los Angeles uh, gang violence, and swore later that she had no idea the Rodney King verdicts were coming down that night. Uh, so you could say that I never learn. I'm glad I haven't. Uh, Barbara, just don't send me back to Boston. Uh, but thank you very much, and thank you to the Overseas Press Club. Thank you.